I'm here at one of Singapore's favorite social media hotspots, the HSBC Rain Vortex at Jewel Changi Airport. I mean, look at this place. It's so beautiful, it's so serene, definitely a place to check out. And your social media feed was probably flooded with posts of this when it first opened. I think it's still a must post spot for both tourists and locals alike. But how much do we really know about it? Today, we're gonna go behind the feed for an insider experience. today who is going to take us around Jewel Changi Airport. We are here at the HSBC Rain Vortex. I don't see anything happening yet. What time does it start? First of all, welcome to Jewel Changi Airport, Naomi. And you have rightly pointed out the Rain Vortex uh, show doesn't start until 10 a.m. Fortunately, I have my iPad with me. The iPad allows me to switch on the Rain Vortex remotely. So it controls the flow of water, it controls even things like the light and sound show, which unfortunately today, I'm not able to show you. You're serious about this, right? Like as in it literally with a touch of a button? Yes, with a touch of a button, the rain vortex will be switched on. So Naomi, would you like to start the fountain? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, what you do is you press this, at, you select the show, uh, okay. and then you press the play button once. And once that is selected... <laughs> I'm very nervous to press. <laughs> okay. And within a short few minutes, you will see the rain vortex switched on. Yeah, wow. wow! That's like so pretty! <laughs> how beautiful it is. Yeah, you, we are lucky we see a rainbow there. It's only when the sun is shining at a certain angle and when you switch on the rain vortex for the first time. I think I'm gonna go home and brag about the fact that I just turned on the HSBC rain vortex with a touch of a button. <laughs> but yeah, everyone's gonna be so jealous, but nonetheless, whoever comes here, they're still gonna appreciate it either way. It's just I have one more thing cooler to say. <laughs> P3, I know most of us see the finale, you know, to the HSBC Rain Vortex, but how does it really work? The Rain Vortex, which is the largest indoor waterfall, spans from the roof of the dome down to the basement water tank where the water gets recirculated out again into a continuous flow. To achieve the circular and very even flow of the water that you see here today, there are a lot of structural and mechanical elements to it. For once, the water is pumped externally out of the building and through the fins into the circular opening of the dome, which is what we call the oculus. The oculus then distributes the water into what we see here today as a fountain. So when you talk about fins, are those the ones that I'm seeing right there? Yeah. Ah, okay, those are okay. the fins. Those actually conceals the pipe. What happens when there is a heavy downpour? Does this mean that the fountain gets turned off and the rain still comes to the oculus? Yeah. When the downpour is particularly heavy, the rain vortex will switch off by itself and the rain will take over the, uh, the fountain. And you will still see the same effect as you see here today. As beautiful as this place is, I know it takes a lot of work to maintain it. How? much maintenance do you need and do you have to close down this entire place in order to really do a clean sweep? We actually have to do different kind of maintenance. Depending on the, the different maintenance, the frequency is different. So we have a six monthly maintenance and a yearly maintenance. During this period, the rain vortex will unfortunately be, have to be switched off depending on the nature of maintenance for maybe about three days to up to a week. And during this period, we also take the opportunity to clean all the necessary tanks and do testing to the water quality to ensure it meets health and safety standards. P3, I noticed there is a flat bit surrounding the fountain. Is it just for aesthetic purposes or is there a function? The flat bit that you see here is actually called the reflective pool. It actually serves two functions. One, it catches the evaporation from the fountain. Secondly, it prevents members of public to get too near to the fountain. The water that you see here, it then flows down to the acrylic panel and creates the water skin effect, which can be observed from basement too. Now, I know in certain parts of the world, if tourists or locals see a fountain, there's a tendency to throw in a coin for good luck. Does it happen here? Because I don't see any coins around this area, so I'm guessing people don't do that. For one, uh, we don't encourage our guests to throw anything beyond 
the glass boundary. So uh, we do that by having signages and even getting our experienced agents to remind our guests when they do their rounds. In addition, we also have virtual boundary lines that are drawn on the glass balustrade. So in the event that there's anybody that crosses over this boundary, we will then activate a response and we'll advise them accordingly. So what we also do is actually ensure that the maintenance of this is upkept. So we remove any remnants uh, every other day to prevent anyone to think that this is an acceptable act. But just for the dollars and cents, um, how many coins do you collect? How much money do you make off the fountain? And what do you do with the, with the money? Okay, uh, the amount is not something that I can actually uh, Described, but uh, <laughs> but what we do is we donate this uh, whatever that we collect. Oh, you want me to sing? The itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the There is a robot <laughs> that's been making its rounds. Tell us about this robot bunny, because um, it's been talking, it's been singing. But I want to know what this uh, robot is for. We have spotted our most popular robot. So we use uh, various forms of autonomous technology to help us in our day-to-day -day operations. So what you have here is the scrub robot. So what it does is that it goes around the forest valley, it scrubs and helps us clean and sweep the evaporation from the fountain. So apart from this robot, we have a variety of robots that we use. We have one that does traffic marshalling. We also have one that delights our guests at level 5 as well. So when we first started, the robot was quite plain looking. What we realised was that people tend to not really take notice of cleaning equipment going around. But when we started to dress it up, we realised that it became more interactive and it could somehow do its job better. So this is how uh, all the robots now serving Forest Valley have different personas and different colours as well. If I press this button, what's it going to do? It's going to talk to you. You can try. Oh! <laughs> ouch! Ouch! She said ouch! So Naomi, the next thing I want to show you is the basement tree pump room. This is where the muscles and the brains of the rain vortex are. So this is an area that is not usually accessible to members of public. So I think it's pretty cool for you to see it. Let's do this. So here we are at the basement tree pump room. This is where all the pumps and controls are. So we have controls like the lighting control panels, the electrical control panels, and everything that powers the rain vortex. You can imagine the pumps like the muscle of rain vortex while the controls are like the brain. I understand the water flows from the top of the dome all the way down to the basement where the tank should be. I don't see a tank, so my question would be where is the water stored? So Naomi, behind you is actually the water tank. You can imagine yourself being in a water tank, but you are sitting in a space that has been cut out to arrange for the pump. So the pump that you see here recirculate the water that is collected behind the tank. It pushes up the water to level 5, where it eventually ends up as part of the rain vortex. This is usually a side that we don't really see. I guess the beauty of it is that we get to see both sides of the coin. We get to see what social media often portrays the rain vortex to be, but then there's also a practical side to it. And I think that often is something that we should appreciate more. I've been to the rain vortex a few times, but I've never actually taken any photos around this area. So Fee3 has given me the best spot at Jewel Changi Airport to take beautiful photos. So Naomi, we are at the level 5 canopy park, specifically the Discovery Slide. You are at one of the highest points in Jewel. And today you can actually have a very good bird's eye view of the rain vortex. Tell me about it. This is like next level. I've never been to the canopy park before. And just seeing the rain vortex from this angle is pretty spectacular. You get to see the curvature of the vortex. You also get to see how the water is just funneling down toward the basement. You really also get to have a bird's eye view of everything, including the Shiseido forest. So it's just really nice and very holistic, especially if you want to make a day out of it. Finally taking some selfies. I have to say it's quite worth it. Although fee 3 for the Canopy Park, um, you need to pay an admission fee for this. Yep. Where would be a good spot to take photos without having to pay? Let me show you somewhere. We are here now today at level 4 Fantos. This is actually a very popular spot with the staff. This table here is usually where I sit to get my morning coffee. It gives you a very beautiful view of the rain vortex, especially in the morning. 
pretty sweet spot. Now you'll just have to fight it out with members of the public like me. Because <laughs> we're definitely going to exercise this tip. We've come to the end of today's episode. Personally, the rain vortex has taken on a new meaning for me. I never knew so many of these little details go into creating something as majestic as this. So the next time you come here and you take a simple photo, remember that there are a lot of people behind it creating something beautiful for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you get notified every time a new episode is out. I'll catch you in the next one.